Welcome to Bite Size PL. We are doing something just a bit different for this week's episode. Kate and Jeanette were able to have a discussion on discussions in a previous episode that we want to play for you this week, which will set up what we're doing next week by taking a deeper look into a classroom to see and hear a discussion taking place. Now let's go to Kate and Jeanette discussing discussions. So excited to have this conversation today. You know how I have this policy that I don't watch movies that have inspirational teachers. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you that for years, yes, right? How could you ever measure up to Henry Swain? <laughs> yeah, I've Which never watched in, in, in the entirety of any of them. Dangerous Minds with Michelle Pfeiffer, Mr. Holland's Opus, <laughs> even Dead Poets Society. I've only watched excerpts. And I've I've had to examine that policy and, and ask myself, why am I so intimidated by these outstanding teachers? And I think it's about the way that they are portrayed in the classroom, because when you think about the, the biggest scenes in those movies, you've got this amazingly profound teacher guiding all of these smart but troubled teens <laughs> through meaningful conversations about stuff way beyond but also including whatever their content was and and i always felt like my my discussions don't look like that in my (laughs) class i'm doing something wrong of course i don't have a script writer and uh you know all of the tools that they had but it kind of got me excited as i was thinking about it let's have a conversation about discussions in classrooms. Jeanette, this is so true because (laughs) when you brought up this idea of talking about classroom discussions and especially like that feeling of (sighs) what you think it's going to be versus reality, right? Even when you're preparing to be a teacher, one of the reasons you want to be a teacher is the, are those grand discussions where you ask these thought provoking questions and get students thinking outside of things they wouldn't normally think about. And I cannot tell you how many times I would have this really, what I thought was a really thought for provoking question. And I would pose it to the class, right? And they're all looking at me. And then suddenly that kid raises his hand and you're like, yes, here we go. They're going to say something. And then you say, okay. And they say, can I go to the bathroom? Oh, <laughs> oh just- my <laughs> gosh. The, the total vibe killer. Yes. You're like, uh, okay. Like apparently this is how it is in reality. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that you think, oh, uh, you know, in your plan book, 20 minute con- you know, discussion oh, about X. Oh, and then lead them you ask the discussion. questions, no one cares, no one's interested. You know, they got a couple who are trying to guess what you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> those those nodders, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we thought it might be fun to talk about discussions and give some do's, some don'ts, some variations, some preparation tips, because sometimes it really does catch fire. And you really do feel when the students leave the class like something magic happened in your classroom. Sometimes the students will even say, oh, that was fun today, or or the bell rings and someone says, the greatest compliment you can ever hear was, class went so fast today. Yeah, it's um, over. Be, because sometimes th- there really is a, a, a meeting of the minds and a conversation about your content. So let's talk about it. Yeah, because we think there are some um, interesting ways to prep and get those moments more often. We all know the realities. We just discussed it and we can laugh about it, but um, we think there are some concrete things. So the first thing we thought about is having really strong norms and uh, ways that you have class discussions. And along with that, we often assume that students are going to know how to have an excellent conversation, but it's actually kind of like content. You have to teach students how to, you know, how conversations, how discussions will work in your class. And sometimes that's counterintuitive because you want it to be very authentic and you want them to, you know, say what they're, you know, speak from the heart and all of those things. But the more you prep them with that soft skill of 
you know, responding to someone in a conversation or acknowledging someone's point of view and or building off what someone said um, in a previous comment, the more effective class discussions will be. And so I think taking the time to do a little mini lesson on what does a great discussion feel like, you know, giving them those sentence starters. I think what you said about blank was awesome because, or I agree because, um, and taking the time to get students in that flow. Yeah, I love I love the idea of the stems and having some sentence stems even on the board or if you have a discussion paper with, you know, something about what what the expectation is. Give them some ways to start, some that show agreeing with, some that show I have an example of what someone else just said, some that show I have a different opinion about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also love your idea of the little mini lesson about about conversations or about discussions, because I think a key part of making these so that they are sustainable and students will keep engaging is making sure that when someone makes a comment, it is received. Yeah. And the way there, you can talk about that with your students. There are a variety of ways to receive when someone makes a comment. It can be eye contact, it can be a nod, it can be a table knock. If you think what they said was meaningful, profound, it can be snaps, mm-hmm. um, just something. Um, it, and it's from the back of the room, we always see such meaningful things when we are observing from the back of the room, which teachers don't get to do enough um, as they see other teachers teach. But I, I hate that feeling where I see a student who risks and makes a comment and then no one receives it. Mm-hmm. And so even as the teacher, if you just make sure you remember just to say, thank you, Kate, that is enough. And then you move to whatever the next thing is. So try to see the kid who who really honors your discussion but then feels invisible after their their comment. So to me, that's just one of the norms. Yeah, that that all comments are received. And I think I think norms can be as simple, right, as you know, one person talking at a time. All those things, um, you know, acknowledge the person's comment before you make yours. You know, acknowledge the person before you before you say yeah. your comment. One that I saw that I loved that, you know, you might consider when I was observing at the Ron Clark Academy, whenever they were having classroom discussions or students were responding to questions, when the student responded, they didn't look at the teacher. They stood up or turned around and looked at the class because their the expectation was you're not telling me, you're telling them. And it was a really cool norm because it felt like it wasn't just like that teacher giving, receiving that comment. It was everyone. It's like, we're, we're actually having a discussion. I'm going to stand up. I'm so glad you brought that one up because I saw it yesterday Mm -hmm. when we were observing a first grade class. And when a student was speaking, the teacher said, look at Kate while she's speaking, which is part of that soft skill of teaching how how we do track the person. And they use the word track a lot in the videos for Teach Like a Champion. And I can remember when I used to do graded discussions, and we'll talk more about structures in a few minutes, but I can remember that sometimes I would actually try not to look at the student who was speaking. I would look down because I wanted them to look somewhere besides at me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to feel like they were having a discussion with me. So make that part of the norm is either, you know, you look at the the rest of the class when you're making your comment. Um, We look at the speaker, not at the teacher. You know, those are really great norms and they will build that feeling like we really are having a conversation in the class. And that reminds me of something you said yesterday, Jeanette, that I needed to be reminded of in class discussions is (laughs) as a teacher, remembering not to repeat the student's answer for, for a couple reasons. One being, we often tend to expand on their answer when we repeat it, and it wasn't what they said um, because you know we're trying to make it fit whatever line of reasoning we've said it. But you said yesterday, why did they say it? If you're repeating it, why did the student say it? If it needs to be repeated, ask, ask them the to repeat. <laughs> repeat yes, it. ask them to repeat. That's acknowledging you said this. You're not having a com. I am not the controller of the conversation. That was your contribution. Say it again. Yes, and that kind of piggybacks with the idea, the norm of um, don't make the whole discussion about guessing what the teacher's thinking, which we're very all very guilty of. And I, and I'm not going to give it up completely. 
because that is kind of where I want them to go to some degree um, on some things. But, but I think that I would say you can take a student's comment and, and not repeat the whole thing, but you can take a piece of it. True. And then you can move it in a direction. But yes, don't just repeat them. Well, and as soon as I, as soon as I, it's so hard for me to let go of that control of like, here's the great thing we're going to get from this thought for provoking question. So let me guide you there, especially when they're reluctant and you're, you know, you're giving them some clues. Do you think that's good? Right? <laughs> like trying to get them with you. But the reality is, as soon as I gave up that control just a little, like you said, you know, we're not, we're not trying to drive it to this point totally right we want them to you know we want to guide it and get them there it, you know we it's it's better so they don't have to guess what we're thinking so let's let's speak to that let's talk a little bit more about the students trying to guess what the teacher wants in a, in a discussion um, because we acknowledge that based on the, the learning and the content we are we have a certain direction we're interested in yeah. but what what do we do when a student surprises us with an insight that is genuine, mm -hmm. but it's different than what we're hoping for or what we were expecting. Well, and how many times do you see that in classrooms, right, where it really becomes, guess what the teacher is thinking? Yeah, that's like, not, not You asked this open-ended yeah. question, teacher, but now we're all just sitting here trying to guess which answer we're landing on, even if it's like, oh, what? what are you looking for in a future job? And, you know, people will start answering and then it becomes pretty clear, like, oh, this teacher is looking for a Yeah, thanks for playing, <laughs> but that's not what I'm going for. Yeah, part of it, I think, is as a teacher, we have to be actually delighted by the student who comes up with something we were not expecting and be, be able to, you're thinking as an English teacher, be able to say, that's a very interesting interpretation I, I, okay, let's talk about that. Let's think about that for a minute. That we, you know, the, let's go back into the book. Let, you know, that's an interesting interpretation of the mother figure in Frankenstein. W what, tell me more. A and, and be able to like, not just want to move on to number three. Right. Because actually this is the goal, is to get students thinking independently from us using the content, whatever it is we're teaching. So yeah, as teachers, we need to be like, oh, wow, that gave me, that gave me a moment. Mm -hmm. Let's explore that. I had a moment in college, actually. I was in a philosophy of science class. It was a very weird mix of science-brained people and philosophy-brained people. Yeah. But we, we were required to read this article. And then we were having a discussion about this article. The professor had posed questions. People were responding. And one student raised his hand and just said, I think this article was completely off base. Here's why. <laughs> I don't think he realized this. Everybody in the class realized it, I'm sure, but him. The professor had written the article that we had read. Oh, he had So noticed. the one that was leading the discussion, he hadn't read, he hadn't seen like, oh, the author of this article is this person leading the discussion. But this professor was like, you know, I never thought about that that, that way. He, yes, he, he, he validated, he had written the article. He obviously had an agenda of where we were going, um, but he validated the uh, opinion and thank you for playing and thank you for participating. And, you know, uh, all opinions are valid here. And I, I never really considered it that way. What, what about this? You know, here's a follow-up question. And did we veer off of the topic for three to four to five minutes? Yes. But it was, it instantly set the tone of like, you can agree, you can have, a, you, I mean, you, excuse me, you can disagree. Um, you can be way off here and we're going to validate that. Yeah. And I want to be clear, you can give feedback when students are not interpreting things accurately. Like this student may have, have misrepresented by misreading mm -hmm. the article, but for the professor to be gracious and to say, that's interesting. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Yes. Because you still have to be true to what's true. And Absolutely. you know, as a teacher of literature, 
Let's go back to the text. The text is the expert. Let's look for the evidence there. So whatever your content is, you're not letting kids just run rampant over, you know, what's truth. But but do be delighted when they surprise you and they go a little bit beyond or or a field even of what your expectation is, because then the conversation becomes authentic. And we got back to where, what, where we were going. And I'm sure, I don't know, but I'm sure that student, by the time we got back there, was now with us. Yeah. Like, oh, I and see And probably that felt way. so seen that the, when he realized, oh, you know, my professor <laughs> wrote like, this okay. and I've just been perhaps offensive. But <laughs> yeah, but the way it was handled was great. All right. Well, let's move a little bit towards some of the preparation that is required for a great discussion, because if you think it's going to be spontaneous, <laughs> you, you are mistaken. Can I go to the bathroom? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much longer? <laughs> what time does the bell ring today? Yeah. So um, when you think about preparation, the teacher must prepare, in fact, over prepare. So that means scripting. That really does mean scripting questions. And and for me, a lot of that was actually typing the questions, the main questions, and actually giving them to the students and giving them time to prepare as well. And you don't have to do it that way, but for some discussions, that will give you your best product. The questions can be open-ended. In fact, any question that can be answered with just yes or no is probably not what you want, right? You want them to expand on things. So... Scripting your questions, giving the students some think time. So that's where you might give them the questions and give them a few minutes to to work with them. And it can be just a thinking about it, or it could actually be having them write, doing a little, you know, quick write. Um, Just make sure that everybody is prepared for the discussion and make sure that there's an opportunity. If it's going to be um, what, what I like, which is often a graded discussion, which means everyone contributes, then part of my coming up with questions has to be questions that even a student who's not up to speed on the content can still have success. Mm-hmm. In some way. In some way, yeah. So finding a way to, to work some of that in. Also, you must prepare for higher order thinking and critical thinking. And that, again, goes back to thinking about where you want to go, where you think they will go. Our adage, you know, what could possibly go wrong Mm -hmm. is a good one to ask when you're preparing because it will Mm -hmm. happen. And so you want to think about, okay, how can I get them really thinking in those higher levels of synthesis and application and, and even creativity with the content? Well, I love that you hit on teacher preparation and student preparation, right? Sometimes we think we're going to pose this question just out of the blue and students will be ready. Like they do in the movies. Yes, well, that's what happens. You know, what do you think about this? And everybody contributes something thoughtful. But, you know, teacher preparation and then preparing the students to have these meaningful discussions. And I, I think that's a really good skill. I think that's a really interesting, you know, way to prepare students, not just with those mini lessons, kind of like what we were talking about, about how to have these discussions, but with the questions, giving them the questions beforehand, giving them some time to write, to think, to come up with some examples um, is so powerful. All right. Shall we talk structure? Yeah. So I think especially as you're trying to build more meaningful discussion, structure is imperative. And, And leaning on structure is going to be important, especially when you're teaching students how to have conversations. That can look like, you know, what you're describing, Jeanette, a a graded conversation where we have a certain structure um, of who's responding when, right? It's Mm -hmm. it's very clear. Um, Those sentence starters, okay, you have to use one or two sentence starters. Timers, I think, are a, a great key to to building structure in a small group conversation. Well, and I was going to say about timers, typically teenagers don't over over speak in in a discussion, but there are some who will. And so it's nice to have even a timer and maybe a person, you know, sitting next to you as a teacher. And I always like to be sitting during discussion so that I don't look like I am and my thoughts are any more important than anyone else's. So if you can, you know, it's nice if you're all seated. And if you can move ch- tables or chairs so that you're facing it like a circle, that's mm-hmm. kind of a cool thing for discussions as well. But maybe have someone on the timer if you have students in your class who will go on. Because sometimes there is that kid that gets kind of the nervous answer going and mm-hmm. they'll go, 
way too long. So maybe you say, you know, it's a 30 second or a 45 second timer, whatever feels appropriate. And it kind of relieves them of the pressure of sometimes they get wandering and they don't know where they're going to end up when the timer goes off. Thank you. You know, let, you know, whatever the next the yeah. next move is mm -hmm. in the conversation. Well, and that's teaching that whole everybody contributes. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a few variations on the whole class discussion to maybe use as prep for whole class discussions, you know, and there is that small group, in, you know, discussion. And one of the things we, we like to use when we do trainings is give everyone in the group three post-it notes mm -hmm. and say, when you contribute to the conversation, you surrender one of your post-it notes to the middle of the table. And nobody gets their post-it notes back until everybody has surrendered our, all three. So that means everybody's been discussed, everybody's contributed at least three times. You know, maybe you're asking six questions and everybody has to respond in some way to at least three. And that, that practices that structure that everybody contributes. Yeah, because um, we want every voice heard. Um, another structure, and it's easily Googled, and there are many variations, is a fishbowl discussion where you have a kind of an inner circle, um, and they're having the conversation. Maybe there's half the class or a third of the class, and you're giving them a question, and, and they each have to contribute, you know, at least two comments. And then the rest of the class is observing. And there are variations where the, the inner circle talks for a few minutes, and then someone from the outer circle can ask a question, and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can swap spots, whatever. But it's kind of like watching a, a smaller discussion, which is not a bad exercise for for students because it gives them a chance to be thinking about the discussion without the pressure of, I have to contribute right this minute. That's a great mini lesson for how to have meaningful conversations. Like, let's talk about sentence starters. Let's talk about the norms of everybody contributes and, and validating each other's answers. Then let's practice. And one way to do that is to do a little example. Okay, was everyone contributing? Did we validate each other's answers? Did we you know, feel like that was met all of our norms, that might be a really good way to do that mini lesson. I always like small groups as, as a practice for a larger group, but I, I have to give some feedback that one of my own children gave to me. And ever since then, I really changed it up. But I used to have groups of four to five students who would sit and move through maybe six review questions or, you know, something from whatever we'd been working on. And then I would pull all the groups together and then I would, you know, pull a card and say, you know, Kate's group, you know, so what, what were your thoughts about number one? And, you know, t Tom, can you share what your group thought about number two? And my daughter said, Mom, it's like we're going over everything twice. Mm -hmm. You know, we do it in the small group and then we do everything again. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's right. And so instead... I, and this is why I have to always move among the groups listening to what's happening. If I can hear that what's happening in the groups is mostly what I need happening in the groups, right? They're, they're kind of getting to where they're having the conversations about, you know, the content that I'm kind of hoping for. Then when I pull everyone together, then it can just let's say, you know, I heard some interesting things about question number three. Let's talk about number three a little bit. We don't have to go through all the way one through nine, mm -hmm. but we just do a, a little, you know, what's the most profound thing, Tom, that someone said as you guys were talking about, you know, the way women are portrayed in Frankenstein or something. And and then we just are getting the best and a little bit of it. And there's still some accountability for the group work. I'm still going to pull cards and, and ask for some some comments about their conversation, but I'm not redoing everything. No, and you're you're more using that opportunity to push their thinking. You know, you have these six questions you're going to ask as a group. Well, then here are the three that go deeper that will help highlight a few things in the discussion, but even yeah, you know, push their yeah, thinking. Like move it. More. Yeah, yeah. Um, some interesting things to think about as you're as you're thinking about classroom discussions and how you can improve them and teaching your students to have more effective It ones. really is fun when you get kids talking. And honestly, we see profound little conversations and class discussions happening in elementary school classrooms. Mm -hmm. In fact, elementary kids in some ways are, are more excited about it They're than so teenagers. Willing to talk. And, and that kind of makes me sad because I think what's happening is teenagers aren't having enough positive experiences with, with discussion so they're not as primed for it as the younger kids are. But, oh, it, it really is kind of magical sometimes when, when students get talking with you as, you know, as, as scholars about something that you've been learning about. I think, I think this is it's a great discussion to keep having about discussions. <laughs>
We'd like to thank our producer, Tom, for making the podcast sound so great. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Please like and subscribe and share the podcast with others. See you at school.